Hello everyone, this is our science for week 9. Our lesson is systems in animals. Remember at the beginning of the year, we learned about the cell lesson. We said that a group of cells make up a tissue. A group of tissues make up an organ. A group of organs make up an organ system. Thus, a group of organ systems make up the organism. So our lesson is about different systems inside an organism, specifically inside animals. So a system is a group of organs that work together. So let's learn about two systems that work together to make animals move. First, we have the skeletal system, which the main organ of the skeletal system is made of bones. What do the bones do? They protect soft body organs. They work with muscular system. The muscular system consists of muscles. They shorten and pull on the bones. So we need both systems for animals to move. For example, the frog uses its strong leg muscles to jump. But how about the animals that do not have bones, like the invertebrates? How can they move if they do not have bones? They actually have muscles. So what do they do? Like, for example, the earthworm. It wriggles by shortening and stretching its muscles. Now, how do animals sense changes? Actually, they use the nervous system. The nervous system is the controlling system inside the animals. So it controls all organ systems. It consists of a brain, spinal cord, nerves and sense organs. So, it helps the animals use senses, the senses that are the sight, hearing, taste, touch, and smell, to detect changes in their surroundings. So, for example, the owl has a powerful sense of sight, and its large eyes help it see at night, whereas the dolphin, it uses its brain to send a message to jump. So the nervous system starts with the brain. The brain sends a message. This message travels through its nerves to its muscles and then it jumps. So now let's learn how do the air and blood travel in the body. The respiratory system is actually responsible for traveling the air in the body of the animals. So we know that animals take in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. So the respiratory system actually brings oxygen to the blood and removes wastes, which is the carbon dioxide, from the blood. The organs responsible for doing this action or it could be lungs, in case we're talking about mammals, or gills, if we're talking about the fish. So here in the picture, you can see the water going in. The gills take, breathe in the oxygen and breathe out the carbon dioxide. Let's learn about the system that allows the blood to travel in the body. The circulatory system. The circulatory system moves blood through the body. What does this blood carry? It carries the oxygen, food, and water to the body cells. It also carries the waste to the excretory system, which we are going to learn about next. 
So the organs, the main organs that are in the circulatory system are the heart, blood, and blood vessels. So we said that the circulatory system actually allows the blood to travel inside the body. And we said that blood carries with it wastes to the excretory system. So the excretory system is responsible for removing the wastes. The organs that are in the excretory system are the liver and kidneys, which filter wastes from blood, the bladder, which stores liquid wastes, the skin, which sweats to remove excess minerals. So when animals sweat, they are actually getting rid of wastes. They are removing excess minerals. And last, lungs or gills that remove waste gases, which we said they get rid of carbon dioxide. Now let's learn how do animals break down the food. They need a special system, which is the digestive system, which breaks down the food. Why does it break it down? So that the animal would have energy to release its nutrients. The organ that is responsible for breaking down the food or actually churning and mixing the food is the stomach, which is right here. Thank you.